very good evening to our guest speaker professor uh, sham sharma from naipur and uh, all faculty colleagues and all uh, attendees those who are all attending uh, very warm uh, welcome to this uh, second event so now we have a uh, uh, first speaker uh, professor uh, uh, sham s yes, sharma so dr sham s yes, sharma is a professor in the department of pharmacology and toxicology at naipur mohali uh, india since 2009 so before joining naipur mohali uh professor sharma i work worked as a post doctoral fellow at the university of illinois at chicago usa and did his phd in pharmacology specialization at times new delhi then dr sharma has uh, published more than 140 peer reviewed research papers patents book chapters with more than 4700 citations with h index of 39 and i10 index of 91 His research interests include understanding the potential role of pharmacological agents in stroke, cardiovascular diseases, and diabetic complications. He has more than 20 years of teaching to masters and doctoral students, and research experience. Dr. Sharma has guided more than 100 masters and doctoral uh, students in his credit. So he has delivered more than 100 invited talks at various national and international levels. He has completed more than 20 extra mural and industry funded research projects. He was an editor of current research and information in pharmaceutical sciences for 12 years and now he is uh, one of the editorial board of uh, several impact factored international journals. He is also recipient of OPPI scientist award, Shaguntala Amir Chand prize and Dr. T N Prasad Memorial Oratation Award of ICMR. then C- cdri oratation award pp surya kumari prize and professor ns dalla award of ips that is indian pharmacological society he is a fellow of indian pharmacological society he was a secretary in a international level of ips for the year 2008 to 2011 he has organized several conferences including drug discovery and development in new millennium uh in the era of 2004 2005 and then in 2006 apart from that he also served as a organizing director of uh, 40th annual conference of indian pharmacological society 2017 uh, sorry 2007 then 11th annual conference of international society for uh, heart research co organizing secretary of ipscon 2016 and stocks in india 2017 so with this warm brief introduction now i am welcoming our guest speaker professor shyam to deliver his uh, lecture yeah please sir now i am handing over to professor sharma sir yes sir yes okay okay yeah please yes. okay 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 uh, yes i think like i think uh, i i i was mentioning that drug safety is a major concern uh, for the pharmaceuticals or whether is biologicals or Uh, any biotechnology derived products or maybe vaccine i think safety is one of the major concern for everyone and it has been observed that like serious injury or death of the volunteer the patients participating in clinical trial are very disturbing many such like you would have seen even in like uh, uh, recently this covid vaccine for one day all the clinical trial were stopped because of like uh, there was a uh, some injury or some uh, serious concern about one of the volunteer So that's why like safety is always one of the prime uh, importance in case of the clinical trial. And uh, all of you know that uh, in case of like uh, investigation of pharmacological agent, you have to do all preclinical studies and then clinical studies. During the preclinical study, there are a lot of like standard toxicological tests. Like uh, some of you would be knowing acute. toxicity subacute toxicity chronic toxicity and special organ toxicity what we have seen that like these studies actually they do not assess uh, the effect of any pharmacological agents or new chemical entity on uh, cardiovascular cns respiratory or the renal system or what they are just assessing the toxicological effect and if you see that uh, there are several blockbuster drugs which have been drawn from the market due to due to prolongation like penilamine in 1988 trelo uh, gilene tofenadine that were like very good uh, drug uh, and that was there in the market 
and later on, like it was withdrawn because of beautiful omission. And another drug like uh, estimajol, C surprise, sertraline, and lidoflazine, lepifloxacin, clopidogrel, and clopidogrel. So now you can see terfenidine was withdrawn from the market because of the QT prolongation. And that is why you will see that nowadays in the market, there is a uh, uh, metabolite of terfenidine, which is fexofenidine, which is available and which do not cause uh, QT prolongation. So that's the thing indicate that uh, these kind of uh, 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 cardiac arrhythmia and all like which uh, observed in these uh, patients actually because of this drug that only you can identify using the safety pharmacological study. Uh, if you look uh, at this slide like safety pharmacology during drug discovery and development and uh, you can see over here that uh, 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 initially like uh, uh, you can do or some of the companies even they do exploratory safety pharmacology. Okay, and then you will see like whenever the candidate uh, uh, go for like IND application, like if uh, any candidate drug has to go for uh, IND application, investigation of new drug application or NDA, they have to have a like series of battery of safety pharmacology. So that's exactly the requirement. Exploratory safety pharmacology generally do not require uh, GLP, good laboratory practices. Uh, they don't fall. But in the event, somebody has to submit some companies or uh, any sponsor or individual if they have to submit any application for IND, they need a regulatory safety pharmacology. Uh, when it comes to exploratory safety pharmacology, you can see over here that uh, risk identification can be done in silico. They like the uh, they, they the involvement of all people like bioinformatics in silico people if they know they can develop some of the tool and for identification of some of the toxic effect of these uh, new chemical and mapping biological pathway general binding profiling can be done safety margin determination can be done and in using the in vitro in vivo assay rapid generation of above information to orient the chemical synthesis some of the companies, I can say that uh, uh, they are doing exploratory safety pharmacology and they are only pushing the molecule which are safe at this stage. Like if any drug is causing QT prolongation in the initial stage, so there are HERG assays, the H-E-R-G, HERG assay, which can be used actually uh, as a high throughput to check QT prolongation. At this stage, discovery stage only, if it's showing uh, QT prolongation, they, these companies don't want to take those molecules for further development because if these molecules reach uh, clinical trial and at that time if they show even the one patient QT prolongation and death is there, then they have to withdraw them from the market. So that, that, that kind of a challenge most of the time these companies. And regulatory safety pharmacology, there are like uh, ICH, I think most of you would be knowing, like International Council on Harmonization, firstly it's for ICH, International uh, Conference on Har Harmonization, now it's uh, 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 ICH has established already some of the guidelines like safety S7, AS7, B guidelines to determine clinical safety in vitro and in bio in GLPS and uh, contribute to clinical protocol for uh, adverse effects identification in human. So there are E14, like during the clinical trial, there are E14 guidelines which uh, can be used for assessment of the prolongation in uh, volunteers. And there are like uh, even proposal of biomarker for potential human adverse effects. And, uh, Conduct the risk management decision for any adverse event discovered before and during the clinical. So that's why also like it's not like safety pharmacological history you have to done, you have to do in the preclinical, but you need to do at the time of maybe phase one, phase two, or phase three. If in clinical trial, if there any cause of concern is there, immediately like you need to again do uh, investigation. 
So there is like guidelines like uh, ICHS 7A and 7B guidelines. ICHS 7A guidelines are pertaining to safety pharmacological safety for human pharmaceuticals. And ICHS 7B guidelines, as I mentioned, cutie prolongation. So this ICH developed a uh, uh, dedicated uh, battery of studies or guidance for doing cutie prolongation. So that's a non clinical evaluation of the potential for delayed ventricular repolarization by human uh, pharmaceuticals. Safety pharmacological studies, like as in S7A guidelines, the objective of the safety pharmacological studies are to investigate the potential of the desirable pharmacodynamic effect of a drug response on physiological functions in relationship to exposure in therapeutic range. So now you can see these are the objective. What is the objective to identify undesirable pharmacodynamic? If any drug is causing like CNS sedation, like sedation or excitation, or maybe any effect, QT prolongation, respiratory depression, all you can come to know. So that is why, like, all the new chemical entities need to identify whether they have a desirable pharmacological effect at the therapeutic dose and above that dose. <coughs> Evaluate adverse pharmacodynamic effect and investigate the mechanism. Even you can investigate the mechanism. What is the mechanism? Like when terfenidine was uh, uh, launched, at that time we didn't know much about this QT prolongation mechanism. So, but once it was there, like uh, immediately scientists started looking, and they found like there is the blockade of potassium channel, which is responsible for uh, QT prolongation. And uh, major. Uh, major uh, objective is to protect the clinical trial participants from the potential adverse effects of any pharmaceutical. So these studies, actually like safety pharmacological study, is not only required for new chemical entity. These safety pharmacological studies can also be incorporated in the other areas. Like suppose you change the formulation actually and there is a change in the kinetic or the uh, increase in the bioavailability. And that can increase the level of the drug, and that can also cause uh, uh, any undesirable pharmacodynamic effect. So, for those, also, like you need to conduct the uh, safety pharmacology study. So, if we look at like uh, uh, safety pharmacology, basically, like they're like core battery safety pharmacology. Maybe like three areas, like uh, what has been seen, I think, uh, last uh, uh, five decade experience, like most of the drugs, they were withdrawn either because of CNS side effect, cardiovascular, or the respiratory system. Okay. So that's why like, they group these uh, uh, studies in core battery involving the major vital functions of our body. And then the follow up study, if there is any cause of concern, if there is sedation or with any new chemical entity in CNS history, then you need to do the follow up study, okay? Detailed follow up study. Same, similarly, like cardiovascular and respiratory, detailed study, follow up study, additional uh, study in the follow up study need to be done. And some of the, uh, some of the organ system which are not covered in core battery and follow up, they have been put into supplemental safety pharmacology. But depending on area to area that you like, suppose somebody has developed some new salicoxin oxid analog, then they need to do like GI safety pharmacological study because yes. so this supplemental safety pharmacology is depending on like uh, so now you can see like there are as seven A's CNS safety pharmacology guidelines. You can see the core battery studies, uh, which are involving general behavior, locomotor activity, and the motor coordination. So though you are from pharmacology background, I would like to mention that FOB, functional observation battery, or it is a modified Irwin test. Uh, one of the scientists, Irwin, developed uh, this FOB studies, and they have been now modified in some aspects. Locomotor activity, if uh, you give a digepam kind of a drug to animal, they'll show reduction in the locomotor activity. But if you give the caffeine, they will show increase in the activity. So that's, that, that kind of thing, actually, you can observe the locomotor activity and the motor coordination. You can check, actually, whether there's a uh, uh, alteration in the motor coordination using the rotor. 
And when follow up stage, you need to do like analgesia, pentobarbital induced sleep time, neurochemistry. You can do like a, a neurotransmitter level using uh, HPLC ligand specific binding can be done. Pro convulsive effect of uh, this substance can be found. EEG learning and memory, whether like uh, the molecule is going to impair the learning and memory or visual and quality. Those kind of like CNS details, CNS safety studies. Uh, when it comes to like respiratory study, like core batteries, respiratory study, like uh, uh, respiratory rate, tidal volume, and oxygen hemoglobin saturation, that can be done. And for follow up study, like airway resistance, blood gases, airway compliance, pulmonary artery pressure, like that can be done. So that's it, like uh, you can do uh, these uh, sort of studies for. Uh, respiration and that's why you have you would have seen in the covid also like uh, uh, many times people have started now measuring uh, blood oxygen saturation and they are like uh, those kind of devices are available at a cheaper cost of around 1000 that can measure your if your levels are good uh, more than like uh, 97 or above that's fine actually no problem actually with that and generally like normal levels are like so now cardiovascular safety pharmacology respiratory like core battery safety pharmacology you need to do the blood pressure study with new chemical entity heart rate ECG and when follow up study you need to do cardiac output ventricular contactility vascular resistance and effect of endogenous or exogenous substances that can be done and for uh, S7B guideline safety, S7B guideline, I think uh, those who have not, never gone to this uh, ICH website, go to the ICH website, ICH.org, and you will get a lot of information about the safety studies for not only for the DH1, even for the biotechnology drive products and all toxic studies. You will come to know all the details about it. So this safety pharmacology S7B guideline for came into the picture and that's applied for new capital entity and the marketed pharmaceuticals and objective were to identify the potential of a test substance to prolong QT and to relate the extent of QT prolongation and the concentration. That way. So now you can you can see that like the, when, wherever the cause of concern arises and that has gone into this one. So now you see, like uh, uh, this is the QT prolongation. This this is the interval actually, like, which is being affected in uh, case of uh, 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 if it's altered by the drug, that can be cause of concern. And there are the one actually like potassium channels are being involved, and uh, this hug as, as I mentioned, like H E R G hug channels actually they can be investigated using battery of test. To check QT prolongation, you can use uh, uh, dog. Dogs are a very good model, like dog telemetry system can be used. And uh, now you can see the beagle dog. These beagle dogs are very docile dog, and most of the time, like you can use this dog for uh, studies. But now you know that, like uh, for doing the dog studies, you require a dog facility. Uh, you need to either procure them or maybe you need to breed them, and you can do in a is the in a um, facility which is approved by CPCSEA for conducting the dog studies. Otherwise, most of the people they do the small animal study. The whole animal study can be done to find out the ECG on this animal, whether it's a beagle dog, cyanomegalus monkey, rabbit, guinea pig. Guinea pig also like you can use for doing these kind of uh, studies. Uh, so that is why, like uh, many uh, uh, many academic institutions, they use guinea pig instead of like dog because uh, having a dog facility is not that easy. But many companies like Jidas, I've seen like they have a dog facility. They used to do the telemetry study, and many other companies like Advenus and all they used to do the. Uh, but that is not a stable model. Like uh, uh, those. Uh, uh, would like to study the QT prolongation induced by the drug because of potassium channel blockage. Uh, dog is uh, like that is not a stable model because they do not have those uh, those uh, particular IKR current actually which is responsible for the 
Uh, you can uh, do conscious animal or in this type conscious animals in particular like uh, uh, you can install uh, uh, telemeter device like radio telemetry devices those transmitters can be implanted in the animal and after surgery one week of after surgery these animals can give the continuous recording of ECG that the advantage or otherwise you can do uh, in the stage animal like uh, guinea pig or rabbit anesthetize them and then uh, record their uh, ECD changes. Even for a chain like uh, people are also looking into can uh, we use the zebra fish uh, skin for the drug induced prolongation but till date like there no regulatory approval uh, for like uh, zebra fish but many people they have approached uh, looking into can be used like zebra fish because like getting uh, animals like red mice or others is not that easy as you uh, okay but zebra fish many people are trying in vitro studies that like that can be done like they can use uh, heterologous expression system uh, most of these uh, cell line like hek cell line they can be transacted and they can be used cardiomyocytes can be used human stem cell drive cardiomyocytes can be used so those have facility of like uh, uh, these human cell drive uh, cardiomyocytes that can be used even the protein fiber papillary muscle perfused myocardium intact heart they can be used for uh, smb value this is like uh, in vitro uh, assay harg assay okay uh, harg stand for human ether gogo related gene and that's the gene actually responsible for the potassium channel and IKR current, and that can be uh, done using patch clamp technique. And that is uh, two type, like either it can be manual or it's automatic. Okay, manual patch clamp is uh, the gold standard. Even Niper Pharmacology department is having uh, patch clamp uh, facility for doing electrophysiology or ion channel studies, and we use patch clamp for various sodium channel activities or other channel activities okay but again it had got a uh, low throughput because like uh, at one time only one cell you can patch and you can record the ion channel activity but now like automatic patch clamp setups are available and uh, you can use the patch express or several other platforms which are available for this so these kind of high throughput qt screen uh, are available and can be used for uh, this one because most of the time like pharmaceutical industries they have number of compound like every uh, month actually they have maybe like uh, uh, one lakh to one million compound so that way like they need to have a high throughput and that's why like high throughput for QT studies also everywhere uh, this kind of like uh, uh, result you get in uh, patch express you can see over here like uh, uh, various molecule actually like uh, the drug which have like uh, 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 the triangle with uh, you can see with the orange okay uh, that's the uh, cisapride and this is like primogide okay and uh, uh, drug like uh, this yellow which is uh, terfanity the drug actually like you can see over like moxifloxacin and other actually have lesser but like uh, if you compare with conventional patch clamp with a radio ligand binding assay and with patch express, you can very well see like this one. So this moxifloxacin, you will see like uh, IC50, uh, 39,167 nanomolar. So there's likely uh, no chance of getting QT. Ketoconazole, less chance. But when you combine ketoconazole with terfanidine, that uh, increase uh, the QT prolongation can be observed. Okay, you can see the terfanidine uh, patch access 38 nanomole uh, IC50 and here like 28 to 56. So that way, like uh, they are like very good assays which need to be performed by many companies. Hug assay and even you can set up like some people can set up their own facility for doing this kind of study. And as I mentioned, like uh, uh, if you are looking for regulatory submission then you require a GLP facility and uh, uh, good laboratory practices. And in India, like uh, uh, in DST, okay, NCGMA, okay, this is the agency in DST, uh, uh, they are approving uh, the facility for uh, GLP certification. NIPER 
pharmacology and toxicology department in mohali we also have a glp certified facility and uh, i hope like in future even the bits pilani or bits hyderabad they can also have a glp certified facility okay because that's uh, they can uh, they can do a lot of industry uh, projects using the facility so the glp uh, there are like oecd principles of glp okay uh, these principles of glp i think every students those who are attending this lecture they must read because if you are doing research and if you follow these guidelines these guidelines are not only for the safety regulatory studies actually these guidelines can also be inculcated in your research project whether you are doing your masters msc m form or phd or post doctoral i think you must read oecd guidelines because they are very good lines and good guidelines and the chances are there like whatever you do today that work would be reproducible even after 20 years so that's kind of a documentation you learn from this so this organization and personnel you require like uh, 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 the people who can handle glp quality assurance unit facilities as per glp norm you require records and reports have to be generated as per glp operators material and reagent as per glp sop uh, standard operating procedure and the performance of the study that has that is the one thing which is linked for each and every pharmacy and other student test system like animal system in vitro system all test system whether using zebra fish or anything is required a proper validation test and the reference site so the principles of glp can be followed like we have uh, this national center for safety pharmacology and what uh, we have seen in the safety pharmacology like automatic animal activity monitor rotor or operators then we have like for blood pressure safety studies uh blood pressure instrumentation nibp and ibp invasive both patch clamp setup we have at like and uh, we have uh, recently upgraded even this we also have telemetry devices actually uh, dsi which can be used for telemetry studies and uh, we have like uh, this lenger dorf system uh, for data acquisition and respiratory safety pharmacological history like you can see uh, 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 this kind of a chamber where like you just put the animal and the animal all uh, respiratory activity tidal volume all the detail can be recorded so this indicate that like uh, these instrumentations are very very essential for this there are several innovations in the safety pharmacological space if we see related with the cns like a uh, uh, video automated system for nociception so now it is available even the seizure liability like uh, conversion so there is an integrated video eeg or in vitro hippocampal brain slice can also be so sometimes this uh, hippocampal brain slice can be also helpful in case of uh, uh, electrophysiology you can use the electrophysiological technique to have lot of record drug abuse like liver chamber model for drug dependence telemetry i just uh, would like to mention that you are uh, the safety pharmacology now uh, if a drug is to be approved for the cns uh, application then you have to conduct uh, drug abuse liability and all those studies or drug dependence is really need to be done our vascular system like in vitro automated high throughput patch clamp as i mentioned earlier external telemetry with high definition oscillometry that have all, also has come firstly like we used to put like uh, uh, inside our uh, inside the animal body those devices now like the external telemetry they have come up and previously like uh, in telemetry study like with the transmitter what we have put it inside after every uh, three to six months we have to change the battery but no not now now no need to like change the battery battery can be charged from outside so those, those kind of innovation had come up as no need to perform surgery again in silico computer modeling to detect those cage prolongation and plus it's like you all this cardiomyocyte uh, hips uh, cm model i think like that can be uh, embryonic uh, stem cell model uh, cardiomyocyte they can also be used and uh, respiratory unstrained video assisted plethysmography so this whole body plethysmography that's the advantage i would like to just put uh, some of the studies for uh, 
um, uh, which we have done uh, uh, so that you understand like what kind of uh, studies to be done. Uh, <coughs> this is one of the molecule actually MP647 which was uh, uh, initially we investigate the efficacy of this study uh, in the stroke model and then we perform the safety control. This is one of the TR analog which was synthesized by our medical chemist, uh, Professor Rahul Jain. Uh, and we have this stroke research facility, uh, uh, which is having all animal video tracking system, gas and static system, homeothermic blanket uh, system, cell culture facility, electrocautery, brain metric, image MRI software, computerized physiological parameter monitoring system, laser Doppler blood flow monitor, blood gas analyzer, telemetry, micro dialysis. Jellular. Although, like a stroke research facility, uh, we have used some of those molecules to find out whether they have a neuroprotective potential. So, this particular molecule, which I mentioned, like NP647, showed uh, 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 activity in the cerebral ischemia model. Once it has shown the activity, that you have just gone to check whether like it is having any effect on the, uh, on this uh, CNS, less peri, and the cardiovascular safety from global studies. So when we perform NP647 for CNS safety pharmacology today, and as I mentioned, like Irwin test, which is a functional observation battery, or we call it FOP, that was done, like home cage observation, handheld observation, open field observation, neuromuscular measurements, sensory motive functions, physiological parameters, and uh, FOP, uh, like diarrhea, polyuria, vocalization, and other behavior. So that, that's kind of like FB was uh, done. Uh, you can see the reference here, like Irwin 1968. After that, like many of the scientists, they have used modified it, and that's why, like many people, they use the modified Irwin test. So they are like uh, a scoring system for a home cage and measurement, like posture, whether it's normal, flat turned, asleep, lying on, on side, or curled up, or really. The similarly for all, like more than 40 parameters. Now you can think it of like, when we are investigating just behavior, more than 40 parameters are being investigated to find out whether drug is changing the behavior. Now you can see like kind of a parameter uh, are there like which need to be assessed for change in the behavior. So now you see like, uh, uh, we, we just looked at uh, the slime, digipalm. Digipalm was used as a uh, reference to uh, check whether NP647 had any scaling effect or excitatory. If a stimulant effect is there, you can always use uh, caffeine. So now here you can see the active spontaneous activity level has gone down with digipalm, but not with this compound. So that's indicate like there is a uh, effect of digipalm, but not of NP647. Handheld observation, similarly, you can see like there's a digipalm is showing effect, but not NP647. Uh, this indicates like no effect in handheld. Uh, open field observation, you can see in the spontaneous activity in the open field, uh, digipalm has reduced, okay? Arousal, or you can see this uh, kind of activity, but not at all. So now you can see there the, is the, another active supported rare actually that also had been affected by uh, the digital pump, not by uh, this one. So there are like uh, various uh, uh, effect was investigated, unsupported rare actually uh, was investigated on neuromuscular measurements. Now you can see the digital pump reduced the abdominal tone, but not NP6%. So this, this, this kind of observation, like uh, are uh, showing like another parameter is the in limb photoscale. So now you can see with the digital pump, there's an increase in this one. Uh, this kind of test are there, like uh, you have to paint the animal paw and from a uh, distance, like you have to put them on the table and then the uh, prints of their uh, foot actually there, you have to see the distance. And that show like uh, in case of digipalm because it's like uh, relaxation or so sedation like these animals show the Indian foot display compared to that. Then we also investigate on sensory motor with no effect actually. Body weight uh, has a no effect actually at diff uh, uh, different time point. Uh, 
locomotor activity, Dijapam videos, you can see the, where the stars are there. This is red. Okay, there is significant reduction in the, with the Dijapam, but not with the NP60. Uh, motor coordination, you can see with the Dijapam, this particular like uh, uh, color, actually a maroon color. You can see over here, like there is a significant reduction, and after 180 minutes, it has come back. But now, not with the NP647 and another NP analog 355. When we check with the cardiovascular activities, uh, you can see on the blood pressure and the heart rate. Okay, uh, there are like, uh, you can see over there is a kind of a uh, reduction actually with this one, with the blood pressure. Okay, and uh, heart rate, there is not much change. And QT prolongation, actually we did not uh, observe with the 10, 20 and the 40. Uh, with QT prolongation, uh, there not, not much effect was there. Respiratory battery, actually we checked respiratory rate, and you can find like there not much effect with uh, on the respiratory rate. Minute volume, you can see over here that uh, minute volume also like not uh, much uh, change with NP647. Tidal volume, not much. So these, all these studies can be done using the whole body plasma from grass. Okay. So though you are actually investigating even like uh, uh, effect of any new chemical entity on asthma, they can definitely use this. So we have investigated like safety pharmacological studies of uh, uh, silicoxib uh, amorphous formulation because like when you change the formulation, there is a uh, increase in the level of uh, silicoxib and whether that can alter. Curcumin analogs, actually, we have uh, in our institute. Dr. Jachak actually, like he was involved in uh, making some curcumin analog. We investigated Santa Quincitrate, uh, one of the molecules, actually, like from uh, Professor Anil Gulati, Midwest University. Uh, in collaboration, we did this particular activity from Midwest University, USA. Nano curcumin formulation. Nano formulation, naringenin, hispiritin, antilishmin molecule. So some of the master students even like we give these kind of uh, project like so that they learn doing like CNS, cardiovascular, respiratory, and they are trained in these kind of investigations. Uh, as you know that uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, this coronavirus pandemic, and uh, uh, till yesterday, like if you look at the coronavirus cases were about like uh, uh, 492 lakhs, about like 4.92 crore, and they covered around 3.5 crore, and there were death of 12.4 lakhs. In India, even the coronavirus cases were like around 84.37 lakhs, and required cases are 77.89 lakhs, and death 1.2 crore. Why I'm just putting coronavirus here? Because uh, uh, nowadays, like many, uh, many, many scientists, they would like to work. Uh, to look for like molecules, like antiviral molecule, which can work in uh, for the treatment of COVID-19, or uh, many people are they are going to develop some of the uh, existing like repurposed drug for COVID-19. So that's like uh, uh, when it comes to safety pharmacology of those molecules, you require these tests. And why I'm putting this one that, uh, uh, you know, like uh, this hydroxychloroquine uh, and azithromycin, they were uh, being introduced actually for initially for the treatment of uh, this one, uh, because as a preventive measure, uh, most of the health workers, they were uh, given uh, hydroxychloroquine. But if you look at some of the report, Nature Medicine, the QT interval in patients with COVID-19 treated with hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. Then you can see American College of Cardiology, ventricular arrhythmia risk due to hydroxychloroquine azithromycin treatment for COVID-19. So now, just to check these kind of risk, and suppose if you're interested to make uh, those uh, uh, analog of like uh, hydroxychloroquine or anything, then you must look into the safety pharmacy. Now you can see some of the drugs which were uh, repurposed for uh, COVID-19, like chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, redazavir, febrilpiravir, lopinavir, ritonavir, uh, umifenavir, darunavir, ritonavir combination, doclizumab, cyclizumab, azithromycin, uh, moxifloxacin, these antibiotics. 
So now you can see if you look at like uh, this prolonged QT prolongation, safety pharmacological studies can be done to find QT prolongation more dimensional. But now you can see the chloroquine causes, hydroxychloroquine can cause favorable to some extent. But again, again, azithromycin or moxifloxacin if it's given the combination. So that those kind of like uh, uh, studies can help to find out the potential cardiac adverse effects uh, of these repurposed drugs. And that's why like safety pharmacology uh, studies can be important for new chemical entities over there. So this safety pharmacology is relatively young discipline in a rapid phase of growth. Safety pharmacology has a great responsibility to protect the public where the caution is uh, appropriate based on potential adverse effect of the event. And most of the safety pharmacology studies require whole animal studies. And currently very few in vitro assays are there for safety pharmacology. And significant efforts are required to develop the in vitro safety pharmacology assay, which can reduce the usage of whole animal. GLP, you can incorporate GLP uh, not in the safety pharmacological study for regulatory, even in your research projects. The GLP assures the quality and integrity of the data generated in the test facility. And GLP allows data to be used by regulatory authorities in regards and risk assessment of chemicals. And GLP avoids duplicative testing. Like if you have done something, some studies uh, under GLP over here in a GLP certified facility, no need to reproduce it in any other facility because that will be uh, considered. But there is a mad mutual acceptance of data. So when uh, uh, any facility is getting uh, uh, certification of the GLP, then uh, mutual acceptance of the data, like uh, Mohali, like if anybody doing uh, GLP talks studies, they are all being accepted by other regulatory agencies. GLP is beneficial to animal welfare because it can reduce, no need to repeat the studies, reduce cost for industry and government, that's also another advantage. And in addition, toxicity studies, safety pharmacological board studies also require GLP. Previously, like before safety pharmacology, only the acute, subacute, and all the toxicity require GLP, but now the safety pharmacological studies also require GLP. So what's the future, like future of the safety pharmacology is to be more the in vitro factorization, minimum invasiveness, if you can develop the method which no need to do much surgery, like telemetry devices and all like the disease induced animal model that can also. Another thing is certified safety pharmacology. In India, we have like certified toxicologists. So they like already uh, 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 this uh, uh, test is there. Some of the people they uh, test DAVT. Uh, in uh, India, actually, they are certified toxicologists. So that's why uh, we also must have a certified safety pharmacologist uh, certifications and uh, GLP uh, can be strengthen and technological advancement like uh, uh, nowadays you can, can can we use artificial intelligence okay in safety pharmacological studies how why so that's why in the future like I think uh, there would be these kind of technology will be introduced uh, I'm sure. With this, I would like to thank this my research team uh, of my uh, student. I would like to thank them for always with me and uh, taking uh, uh, care of labs and uh, publications. And everything. thank you very much. And this is the beautiful campus of uh, Naipur Mohali. And I think like uh, I can see the Brits campus also uh, similar to this. So that's a great. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I would be happy. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you for your uh, enlightening talk. Now the uh, floor is open for discussion. Yeah, please. Please, sir. Sir, you are on mute, sir. Harish Kumar, sir. Sir, your voice is not audible. Uh, please check your speaker. No, no, we are not getting your voice. I think there's some uh, technical. <laughs> Please, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, myself, uh, Ajina, sir. Uh, from yes, Ajina. 
Yeah, oh, great, great. Yeah, good afternoon. And for taking us throughout the safety pharmacology basic studies. And yes. All. Sir, I have a, just a small question for you. Ah, yes, uh, please. Yes, sir. Uh, how can we do safety pharmacology studies using the like uh, basic in vitro studies? Means like the basic principle, what should be there? Uh, basic, uh, can you just elaborate actually like, uh, because like, uh, basic means like uh, uh, basic pharmacology? Yeah, safety pharmacology study. For safety pharmacology. Uh, yeah, yeah, safety pharmacology like uh, uh, if you have a uh, in vitro, like suppose if you like to do the in vitro safety pharmacology, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, you can use, as I mentioned, like uh, uh, this uh, uh, HERG, HERG assay which is involved like uh, cell culture facility, where uh, the CHO cell line, okay, Chinese M hamster ovary cell line, or maybe like uh, there are uh, 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 some of the cell line which can be transfected with the heart channel, okay? And after that, these can be tested, new chemical entity can be tested on them. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that way, that way, like, uh, uh, if you have a facility for uh, cell culture, you can do. And in fact, I can uh, tell you that uh, uh, if you have a facility for cell culture, you can do her assay, can establish. But I think you would require the patch claim setup, okay. uh, like uh, single ion channel activity. So either you have electrophysiology setup or automated electrophysiology setup. Then you need to integrate your uh, uh, cell culture facility with that one. Then you can do uh, this kind of studies. We have actually we have a patch clamp uh, lab, and one of my scientists, Dr. Jayan Singh, is doing that study, and uh, he's an ion channel uh, scientist. So he do a lot of this uh, uh, He can be contacted for those kind of channels. Yeah, sir. Sure, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, yes, madam. Uh, uh, yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to know, we are working on number of nano formulations. So okay. now I saw that uh, some safety pharmacology on some nano herceptin and something else was done, curcumin. Now, what yeah, yeah. is the extent of safety pharmacology for a nano formulation is what I wanted to know, because these are always with approved drugs. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you like... Uh, Safety for like suppose some somebody has to go for like they have developed new nano formulation and uh, there is the moment you are telling the new formulation there is a change in the concentration like uh, in one of the study we did actually with uh, Dr Arvind Bansal he is involved in uh, uh, SNETS okay uh, self emulsified nano drug delivery system yes they, they made this telecoxy and the curcumin formulation so now. So making the snares actually there's a change in the level of salicoxib or curcumin. The moment you are changing the level, then you have to do safety pharmacology. If there's a change in the level from the like uh, from the marketed formulation, if you're comparing and if you're engaging the level, uh, change in the level can change the undesirable, can lead to the undesirable pharmacodynamic. And that is why like uh, always it is uh, better we have to do safety farm to other places. And uh, uh, one uh, aspect about nano formulations is they can exhibit high intracellular uptake. Right. So does yeah. safety pharmacology address this? Because the biggest biggest challenge we have seen when we do even simple toxicity is okay. placebos are very safe at very high concentration, but when you have the drug you can see a distinct, you know, concentration dependent toxicity beyond a certain yes. point. So, yes, yes. is this addressed in the safety pharmacology or does this have to be redesigned as a parameter now because of the nano formulations? No, no, that is why actually nowadays uh, this uh, uh, safety pharmacology has been incorporated into the toxicity studies also. Okay. At that time of when, when, when they are being done tox studies, at that time only the safety pharmacological studies can be incorporated. So no need to do the separate. Like you have already like administering the drug for like acute or subacute toxicity. So those animals can be uh, now evaluated for CNS functions, cardiovascular functions and the respiratory functions. Okay, okay. So now it has been like uh, all together can be done in the one in okay. one test. 
Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It was a very nice, lucid lecture. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your enlightening lecture on uh, drug safety and safety pharmacology in the aspect of drug discovery and development and its associated regulatory guidelines and innovation. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for your wonderful piece.